All right, we're all in. So, uh, hey, welcome everybody. We this is uh, the January 2020, the very first uh, D to D live of 2020. How is everybody feeling so far in the year of vision? Beginning <laughs> of a new decade. That's kind of cool. It is a uh, new decade. Although some were arguing about that. Have you heard this whole argument about uh, the decade doesn't start until? Oh yeah, twenty twenty one. I am. I, I would say that the decade has started. However, you know, whatever. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm right there with you. Yeah. Uh, the, so, the key thing is, what are you going to get done this year in your writing and publishing journey? Right. It is a good question. Yeah. What are you getting done? What's on your list? Myself, I've got uh, actually. I released a book already, and I have another one up for pre-order with a co-author. So for me, it's been a, uh, and I've been in two anthologies that went live this month. So January's been pretty amazing, but it's all the stuff that was stacked up from previous stuff. So how about you, my friend? Yeah, I front-loaded too. Yeah. I had, I, I've got a couple of books that have already uh, gone into pre-order this year. I've got uh, webinars galore. It's just all happening. All of it is happening. Dan, what's going on? It has been a really busy, busy January here at Draft to Digital, just in general. I, mean, I, I, I don't write books, but uh, we've just had all kinds of exciting things. Uh, talked to a lot of potential new partners. So it's been a fun uh, beginning to the uh, 2020. That's for sure. So we want to welcome, because this is the first time we've actually sort of simulcast to both Facebook and YouTube. Uh, so we want to welcome uh, anybody who's tuning in via YouTube Live. So uh, hello, YouTube, and thanks for thanks for joining us, man. We are we are going to have some fun with this. So we've already got questions piling up. Uh, do we want to just hop in, or is there anything we want to talk about before we get into this stuff? Uh, let's. I think we should go ahead and hop into the questions. Okay. Uh, I, first up, I got to post this because this is from uh, my good friend Kayla, and she says hashtag best decade ever. So we're already <laughs> off to a good start. Uh, which who's uh, who's up first? We got. We haven't started flagging our questions in Slack yet. We have so not. I, don't I think oh. I flagged the first one. If that's a useful one. We got one from Amos here. Let's po let's pop yeah. this up. And uh, Mark, I think you were talking about. You yeah, that was, that was one I think I wanted it. to address. So uh, just for the audio, um, uh, Amos asks, is this a place to ask questions? Yes, it is the place to ask questions. Thanks. Uh, so the, I answered that one. That was good. See, look, at I'm on a roll. Um, so uh, he said, I'm noticing that not all libraries are offering my books for recommendations on OverDrive. Why is that? Thanks. And so, Amos, I'm going to have to actually maybe interpret that question. And does that mean that so some libraries don't have your books available through OverDrive, but other ones do? Or is that some some libraries have all your books or not. So I'm going to assume the first question, and if I'm wrong, uh, do do let us know, and and of course we can maybe answer that better. But what it is is overdrive.com. Um, you you should be able to go there, and anything that uh, you've pushed to Overdrive, you know, ideally through Draft to Digital, of course, you'll see listed on Overdrive. It usually does take a couple weeks for that process. Usually, if you give it a, a full more than seven days or two weeks, it's usually in the system. It's there on overdrive.com, which you can search. You can search by title, author, name, et cetera. And if the library purchases it for Overdrive with the one-to-one -one license, then you'll see it in the library system. So that may be why a uh, library system has some of your books and not others. Of course, if they're local, let them know you're a local author. And what I often do is I go to overdrive.com and I actually send them a link to my book on Overdrive just so they're sure that, yes, you can get it from Overdrive. Now, there are other uh, licenses with Overdrive that you can get through draft to digital and that's the cost per checkout model. So the difference between that and in that case, the library isn't curating. And in that case, the library may have just pushed the entire catalog forward and then they let their patrons decide uh, what's gonna happen. So those are, those are kind of the two ways that that works for Overdrive, uh, which is one of our many fine library uh, systems that you can push to through D2D. Guys, do, did I did I answer your interpretation of that question? Uh, you did, yeah. Okay. It's just really important to remember that if your book is available to OverDrive, that doesn't mean that every library has it. Um, they have people at the libraries that acquire the books, and so you got to make sure they hear about it so you can let your fans know they can ask for the book if it's not already in their library system. That goes for both audio and digital. So, Yep. I concur. 
<laughs> That's what people say when they were only half listening because I was trying to figure out the new, <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah, we're we're on a new system this time because we had a lot of issues last time. So if you were with us last time, uh, thanks for showing up again because we were a little bit late because uh, our our normal software solution just would not connect to Facebook. Uh-huh. Uh, so. But I think it's all working out. So. Yeah. Uh, wh- who's up next? We got a question from uh, Will James. Anybody want to tackle this one? We let's see. Received an e- the email about author copies and began to order one. Ended up being a dollar cheaper to buy it on Amazon with the eight dollars shipping on the author's copy. But it looks phenomenal. Thanks. So it wasn't so much a question as a statement. But I'm glad it looked good. And we do and- have a surcharge on um, our, our partner. Because of the way print on demand works, for them to just print off one copy of the book, they charge you a little bit extra to do so. Uh, so it can be cheaper if you buy three or four copies uh, for that first one. Uh, you know, we are looking at different options to provide author uh, copies cheaper, and hopefully that'll work out. Um, but for right now, uh, yeah, ordering a single copy is a little bit more expensive. I have our first question from YouTube. Uh, so I'm going to pronounce this as John Smith. I'm just going to go for it. Uh, so ask, uh, I want to know how to publish the book and, and can we publish audio books? We do have an audio book partner uh, with find away voices and you can get to them through, through us. Uh, so if you use us to publish your, your ebook and the way you would do that, John, is you would, if you don't already have an account at draft to digital.com uh, go set up account. It's absolutely free and you can upload your manuscript as a Word document or an RTF file and just we'll walk you through the whole process there uh, so that you can actually get your book up, converted, and ready to go out to all the storefronts. And then once you've done that, you can actually uh, port it over to Findaway Voices, which is our partner for audiobooks, and they can help you find an narrator and get that uh, produced. So if anybody want to throw some things in to, on that front? Uh, the only thing I would add uh, is the question about publishing a book, and and it's easier to go to our awesome YouTube channel, and there's a walkthrough process in Kevin's sexy voice with some nice music in the background that kind of walks you through just how easy it is. It should be intuitive, and it's and it's very uh, friendly to do. But I'm a visual person, so I love those videos. So uh, John, uh, I think for publishing a book, yeah, it's free. It's easy to do. Free conversion. All the really great content is there. And uh, and I'm sure we can we can just throw a link to the YouTube channel if you're no that's from YouTube you're on YouTube so you know where our YouTube channel is yeah yeah so, there you go and by the way if you are uh, if you are on YouTube and you haven't already make sure you subscribe to us we're supposed to we're obligated by law to say that like every five minutes subscribe to us on YouTube and hit the little bell for notifications <laughs> can, uh, uh, can I do a follow up so Amos uh, clarified uh, something yeah, did you yeah, see that question that popped in uh, where while we're um, I'll, I'll look for it and put it up. Is it it's right we... below Ernie Dempsey's uh, smart aleck comment. There we go. There you go. <laughs> so <laughs> when I uh, check the libraries, this is the clarification. Some will find them as recommendable, but others can't find it at all. So Amos, what I'd like you to do is uh, please email uh, our customer service team about that and ask them to send it over to me. I'll, I'll dig into it with you. Uh, I'd love to see some examples like this library has this, this library has that. If we need to, we can get with our uh, OverDrive folks and see, is it a systematic issue or is it um, is it just the way different libraries uh, operate, like the one-to-one license, et cetera. So thank you for asking the question. Sorry, I couldn't answer it live, but I will dig into that for you um, offline, backstage later on. Excellent. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hop over to a question from Regina Clark here. Uh, so do you have a lot of readers to depend on like, no problem in sales. I don't know who that question is addressed to. It may be addressed to someone in the in the uh, chat. I just I didn't read it before I selected. I'm sorry. I was just hopping ahead. She, she had another one. <laughs> Kevin has a lot of readers, though. He does. I do have a lot of readers. Um, Where was uh, I? Thought I was look. I thought I was clicking on another one. She had. Sorry about that, Regina. I will find it and I will post it. So uh, let me hop into the next logical question. I'll read it first. Let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, well, there's a comment from Dan Gallagher that says we're being very helpful. Thank you. And then he follows up with, how do you get listed on OverDrive? So to get listed on OverDrive, you can go through Draft2Digital. It's one of our options. 
Uh, all you have to do is if you've got the book already uploaded there, go in and uh, hit the check mark next to Overdrive and we'll send it for you. Um, you can also go to Overdrive through uh, Kobo. So those are the two major ways to get onto uh, the overdrive, into the Overdrive system. Very good. Uh, let's see. We got a question, another question about audiobook distributors. This one from BK Roy, Royston Publishing. Uh, the audiobook distributors do they do they only publish full service audiobooks, or will they distribute audio summaries or one track or one chapter audio documents? That's an interesting question. So it's my understanding, and we don't do the audiobook distribution, so I, we could be a little bit off. But it's my understanding they have like most of the retailers have a yeah. certain uh, length they require it to be. Um, they the retailers themselves have rules. Uh, I don't believe that our audiobook partner Findaway does have any particular rules along those lines. Uh, they do have a um, their own platform where that you can sell direct, and so I know Mark's been running kind of a test. Uh, with them on a like a shorter book that he's done, um, ten thousand words uh, has not been an issue for short stories. Good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, have you noticed that with Audible as well? Like, has have you been able to distribute things at ten thousand word length? Yeah, they do go to Audible. Most people aren't going to waste a fifteen dollar credit on a right. you know a five dollar <laughs> ten thousand mm -hmm. word short story. Uh, but I usually sell more of those in the library markets, anyways. Um, not not the token based systems like Audible. And now with uh, through Find a Way, you've got pricing control at all the retailers, but uh, Audible, and so you can sell those short stories for like two ninety nine, three ninety nine in audio, where there really wasn't a market for that when everyone was just buying audio with a credit. So everyone wanted to get the longest book possible. All right, I got a question here from Sally Miller. Let's show it, huh? Uh, I've been publishing my books via KDP since 2015. Just just gone wide via DDD. Thank you. No, thank you, Sally. And what are some of the best ways to market my books published via DDD other than emailing my list to let them know that they are now available in other stores? Uh, I mean, honestly, that is the first thing I would do is, you know, go to your platform first and start telling them about that, asking them also to spread the word. Um, but there are a lot of, you know, there are a lot of marketing tools out there, Sally, and I'm going to just, I don't want to assume anything, but, uh, just so I can hit all levels here, uh, advertising is always uh, a good way to get the word out. Uh, you can advertise on platforms like, uh, BookBub has an, a ad platform. They also have their featured deals, which are very useful. If you can land one of those, it's usually, uh, worth its weight in gold. Um, there are uh, Facebook ads you can use to advertise. So advertising is one route. Um, I'm a big fan of content marketing. I like to produce as much content to help funnel people back to uh, my stuff. So YouTube videos, podcasts, blog posts, you know, things that the reader can relate to and really uh, enjoy and share. And then always fall back on asking them to share that stuff with as many people as they can. And that's sort of the short, compact answer. And I'm sure these guys have some other uh, tips they can throw in. They, they can feel free. Um, I wanted to let you know, Sally, that we actually do regularly get promos from some of our uh, retail and library partners. Most commonly, Apple Books, Kobo, and Overdrive. And I am currently uh, in the process of putting together uh, a promo that's going to be D to D titles published to Kobo that's going to be coming out. So if you email our uh, customer service team, I'll make sure they have a link to that. And, and that's not just Sally, but you know anyone listening. And what we do is we send you a form. Unfortunately, it's manual right now. So you fill out the form, you tell us about the book, and then we, we extract it, put it into uh, a spreadsheet that we send off to the Kobo merchandisers. And then from that, they select what they are uh, willing to promote or what they want to promote in different categories, different genres. And uh, similarly, we do have uh, things like that running from time to time. We also have where you can let us know if you have any books up for pre-order. There's a form that's open all the time where you can say, hey, my book's up for pre-order and I'm using DDD to get it to these retailers. Because for example, uh, we met with a couple of our partners yesterday and we're pitching new titles to them. And we're looking at, hey, this book is coming out in February, it's coming out in March and it's in this genre. And if you're looking for something along this line, 
these lines as so they're very subtle marketing they're very similar to a, a lot of our retailers do manual curation so a lot of um a lot of stuff on kobo and apple is more like the way a bookstore would merchandise or even the way libra librarians would would decide and curate as opposed to since you're used to kdp where the inmates kind of run the asylum and there's all these automated tools and stuff like that and algorithm based there's a lot more human curation that happens and so what we're trying to do is we're trying to use a little bit of systematic stuff, but also uh, take advantage of some of the humans that we know are going to look at uh, titles there. And the best part about these retailer promotions is they are all free. They don't charge you like Amazon is now uh, charging for ads on their platform. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Sorry. I was going to go off on a tangent, but I forgot she specifically said she's uh, wide now. So, um, okay, uh, we got a question or a question and comment from Muzz Murray here. Uh, I finally got my book, You Are the Light, published on D2D &D today. Uh, that's fantastic, man. As system said, I could customize my universal link by adding my book title. However, the URL immediately created itself as soon as I added the requested link to my book. Never saw a way to customize it. It's not too late now, Muzz. Um, if you log in, go to the, your dashboard on bookstoread.com and you click on the uh, left-hand side, the left-hand column, if you click on the link there, uh, on that page will be some, uh, some little drop-down boxes, basically, down below where it says, uh, you'll see customize your URL down there. You can click on that, type in your custom URL. It'll tell you whether or not it's available. Most are uh, right now. And you can hit save, and then that will become the new custom URL. And then you can copy that from the little box up top. Um, I, I, it's, unfortunately, I don't have a I, – I could go through a little bit of trouble and try to find the uh, page and show you, but uh, that might that – might, I'm not going to risk it. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody have anything you want to throw in on that? Uh, if, if it's taken already, for example, so let's say your title is uh, The Awesome Book because, you know, oh, sorry, You Are the Light. Let's, so let's say You Are the Light is taken. Uh, what you can do is you can do a modification of that. You can do U dash R dash the light or, or um, some sort of abbreviation like maybe Y A T L or something like that to make it as, as small as possible. So don't despair if it's already taken, just uh, be a little bit creative in that. Um, we had a follow-up question from Sally Miller asking when paperback publishing will be available. So D to D print. Right. And so we have our uh, print program in beta right now. If you go to uh, drafttodigital.com slash print beta, you can sign up for the beta. Um, we've been doing some revising to the whole process. Uh, we've been working on it for almost a little over a year now. So we want to make sure we get it right. Um, our print program it's got some neat stuff like it will help you create a cover if you don't already have one so based off of your ebook cover we can create the wraparound cover that you need for print um we're working on we found that a lot of people wanted to use us for just print uh, and we had originally kind of built things so that you could use us like kind of along the same process as you were distributing your book uh, to our digital retailers so we're revamping that. And once we finish with the revamp, we're going to be letting more people into the beta. Um, as far as when we're going to go live with it for everyone, it's probably still uh, several months out. Okay. So that answered a couple of people's questions uh, about print. Um, this one's interesting. I think there's a kind of mix up. We're going to throw this one up here. I heard your beta testing, putting audio books in Walmart. Uh, how's it, how's this going and how would that be done? Uh, so I don't know if Findaway is doing anything with, with Walmart. I think you may have gotten a wire crossed with um, some stuff that Kobo was doing because uh, Kobo actually is putting eBooks in Walmart. Uh, but I don't think audiobooks are part of that. They might be. Mark, you might know better. I, th than I think do. they might be. And, and I think because I know uh, Kobo Writing Life recently and within the last few months, I guess, announced that they would uh, start taking direct audiobooks as well. So you have the choice yeah. of, of using uh, Find Away Voices or uh, or Kobo Writing Life uh, to get your audiobook up there. And that's probably it because they do have a partner with uh, only Walmart in the US, so not Walmart Canada or, or anywhere else. I thought Walmart was only in the US. I thought that was America's store. Um, well, we have them up here. 
And just to throw it out there, you can get to Kobo through draft to digital So if you're already distributing through us, uh, we can make that pretty quick and easy. Not to detract from Kobo writing life. I mean, it was, you know, put together by a, a handsome man. Um, but, it, you know, if you want to make your life a little easier, go straight there through us. All right. Uh, next question. Uh, and this one says, does an author just select a template and the formatting is done automatically, or does the author use the template to format the manuscript herself? Um, so we have some pretty amazing automated templates. Um, when you upload your manuscript, you can upload as a Word document or an RTF file. You can upload an EPUB as well, but we can't do any formatting on that. Uh, so if you upload as a Word document or an RTF file, you can use any of our templates and it'll automatically format the book in the template you chose. And the great part about that is when we get to print, that template can carry over to print. So your, your ebook can match your print book. So uh, it's all very easy, very automated. Uh, it looks great. Uh, we get nothing but compliments on it. It's a, it's a little bit like, um, it's a little bit like having vellum for free. Uh, not quite as robust as vellum, but you get a whole series of really cool templates that will make your book look great. So you, anybody want to get that? to see a, uh, a preview of that Yeah, uh, in the browser itself, just like right after we generate it, which only takes a few seconds. Uh, you can download the EPUB uh, or the movie file or the PDF file and look at them in whatever program you want to. Like if you want to uh, sideload it onto your Kindle, for instance, you could do that. All right. We got a question here from M a. And that's as far as I'm going. Can you discuss promotional and affiliate earnings opportunities offered by use of B2, B2R book lists? And I think they're talking about like the reading, our, our books to read reading lists. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to assume. These are a very cool tool. If you haven't seen this yet, go over to books to read .com, log, you know, create an account or log in. And then you can, uh, there's a drop down box right next to it that'll let you uh, select reading lists. And these are, are customizable lists, little customizable carousels. You can arrange them any way you like. You can put your own graphic header on them. Uh, I don't have mine preloaded to show, but you can. Uh, but I have one that's all about thriller books, and it has like divided by um, certain topics. So mine is divided by like all books related to uh, Atlantis, or in this carousel and all books related to the uh, Antarctic are in this carousel. Uh, you can do that. You can create a uh, reading list that's built around your own series if you want. It doesn't have to be your books. It can be any book uh, that's, that's available anywhere. You just create a universal book link for it and you can add it to a custom carousel. And you can do little hero books, like a single book that's not in a carousel that gets a little bit more of a description. So it's a very co cool sort of book page. And because you can insert affiliate links from a variety of retailers, and those include Amazon, uh, Barnes and Noble, uh, I believe Kobo, Apple, and Smashwords, which uh, always makes me giggle a little. But because you can do that, uh, all those books will, when the reader clicks through and they go to their store of choice, if you have an affiliate link associated with it, you can make a little bit of extra money. So that's a great way. I use these as a marketing tool. So like I'll do a promotion. I might ask a whole bunch of authors to kick in with me. We're gonna all reduce the price the price of our book for a set period of time. And I'll put all those books on a reading list and we can all send that reading list out to our list. And so readers on our various lists can go through, ch choose the books they want, buy them right from that. And, eat, and uh, I get a little bit of a extra kick because of the affiliate links and the authors get the sale. So there, there's a lot of ways to use it. But that's that's one fun way that I like. Uh, Kevin, can I add something to that? Because, you know, this yeah. is additional earning no. opportunity that goes Silence. beyond <laughs> beyond <laughs> just selling your own books. Right. So just remember, like there, there's a really great program, a Ticket to True, to True Love, which is a whole bunch of different authors writing romance series all set in the in the same universe but they're all publishing them independently, but they have this master list. And of course, the person who's doing all the work to create that master list is, is using their affiliate link, which is great. But then it's also um, it promoting their other titles and things like that. And the other income opportunity that you have outside of just selling books through our retail library systems is our amazing Refer a Friend program, right? 
So that's a way that you can, if you refer somebody to use draft to digital because you know how awesome it is, you can earn money off of any sales that uh, they make. And it comes out of our pocket, not your author friend's pocket, correct? Yes, that's right. The so. refer friend. Sorry, I was reading comments. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> Jumping to save me, Dan. I'm the new guy. I still um, don't know as much. You gotta, you gotta yeah. answer my questions. Yeah, please. our refer friend program, which you can find when you log in at uh, drafttodigital.com. Uh, you can uh, you log into your account. And you can go to I think it's my account is the menu item. Dan, am I right? Uh, yes. Okay, uh, you can actually create a, a unique URL that you can share with people. And uh, when they join up, you get two years, for two years, uh, you get 10% of our cut of their royalties. So we're the only ones who quote unquote lose anything in that deal. They get to keep their, you know, their usual royalties and you make a little extra scratch. So that's two years of additional income for you. So, you of course go promote that as much as possible and make them successful, and so everybody wins. Um, okay, I got a couple of of beauty print related questions, and I'm going to see if we can cycle through them pretty quick. The first one is from Richard, and he asks, uh, "Will author copies be available to print in Canada?" Can the Canadian answer that one? <laughs> Sure. So the Canadian really in the room. Uh, hey, Richard, how are you doing? Richard happens to uh, be part of the same writer group that I'm part of here in the uh, Kitchener-Waterloo area, Cambridge Writers Group. And um, I'm actually looking at a local partner to do distribution for Canadians because, yeah, the the, the print costs are, are reasonable and they're great. But once you cross the border into Canada, it's kind of uh, it, it's, it's cost prohibitive in some cases, uh, even customs and brokerage fees and stuff like that. So we are looking at ways to split that off. We are waiting until uh, we, we continue to re-enhance the new uh, changes that we're making to the beta program. And then we'll be looking at alternatives for author copies, not just you know Americans, Canadians, but even, even our, our friends overseas in different local partners, because I think we can potentially get something started in Canada first and then use the same technology to split it off. The goal is to make it easier and faster for you to get those copies so you can check your proofs, et cetera. Or if you're selling, and Richard, I know you do a lot of uh, book fairs and comic cons and things like that, or you know, for getting local copies and not having to pay so much shipping all those boxes. Yeah, we're uh, we've we've kicked around starting a new service called Smuggle to Border uh, to get our books across the border to these authors. Um, <laughs> That's still in the works, though. So. Uh, so Glenda has a question about OverDrive and books. Uh, will OverDrive accept printed books for libraries when you get the beta printing tests done? So OverDrive does not uh, deal in the printed books, but you will be available for libraries to order. Uh, you'll be in the Ingram catalog. And so for print, uh, libraries tend to order from Ingram and uh, up till recently, Baker and Taylor. Is that right, Mark? Yeah, yeah. Um, so you, you, they will be available, uh, in the print, uh, uh, markets that libraries buy from through like DDD print or Ingram spark or whatever. Right. 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 Yeah. So, um, Dan asks, will the vellum for free curl or is the paper integrity robust? And we only make the finest digital paper, Dan. So it will not curl, uh, no matter what the humidity, uh, let's see. Here's one from Bill. It says, I get hung up on details. It's my fault. Is there a checklist? Have you removed competitor links? Does your cover match the title, et cetera? I'm driving Alexis nuts with do-overs, so sorry. Um, there were a lot of questions there that I'm, I'm not entirely sure were not rhetorical. Yeah, we, we definitely, <laughs> I, I think that's a great idea. We don't have a checklist right now, but we, we, we can produce one uh, just to kind of go through uh, because not everyone uploads a book every month. And so just have something to refresh your memory. Um, that's something we can definitely uh, put together. I think that is a good idea. And we do, um, in a in a fashion, we kind of do have a checklist in that there are those the steps you go through in producing the book. That's not that's not exactly what you're asking for, but I, you know, you can sort of measure because you can't you can't move along in the our process without a cover, for example. Right. Uh, well, I guess technically you could, but you we will eventually alert you that your book has no cover. <laughs> um, oh, 
do a little skip there. Hold on. I got to back up. Uh, thanks for the great service. Thank you. Um, let's see. There, there's a question embedded in that. Let me see. Uh, okay, here we go. Here's a question from Robin. Um, thanks for the great service. Love that you do. The formatting saves me so many headaches. Is there a way to generate a coupon code in promotions, or does one have to do that through each retailer? Coupon codes, man. So <laughs> right, right now, um, Drop Digital doesn't have any storefront, and so we don't deliver uh, books to readers at all. Um, some of our partners uh, have promotional codes that they'll offer when they're running promotions, uh, but there's not a way to generate a promotion code uh, for anyone that we work with, just kind of uh, randomly at this point. Um, Apple does let you give away a certain number of books for free. And if you contact our customer service, you can request a, a code that people can enter on the Apple bookstore and get a free copy of your book there. Um, but other than that, there's not any uh, custom coupon codes that you can generate. Um, I know we're working with Kobo on a big promotion for March, I believe. Uh, and they're going to give us a, a coupon code for everyone included in that sale. Um, but it's it's more of a, a plan thing that, than anything. So, Okay. Uh, Richard Asher asks, do you know if Apple ranks books separately by market slash country like Amazon or do their promotion slash ranking decisions apply globally? Uh, uh, I think I get that one. Or Dan. Uh, go for uh, it. Yeah, yeah they, they do actually have different territories. They actually have different merchandisers for Canada, US, Australia, et cetera. So they make those decisions separately. They make merchandising decisions separately. Sometimes they do things at the same time. So seasonal or some of the promos may be in multiple territories at the same time. But the ranking is based on the on the geo territory. So uh, Amazon, Apple, Kobo, for example, you'll get uh, a different ranking in Canada and the U.S., for example. Nook, uh, you'll only ever get the U.S. because it's the only country that they exist in. But all those international places, they, they tend to rank them by territory because it makes sense. People in this country are now reading this book as the most popular one. That, that makes a lot of sense that uh, they all do that. Um, we have a question here uh, from Glinda. I do picture books. Will you be making bleeds available to people like me, also the larger sizes that kids like in picture books? Right now we aren't. Uh, our print program is going to be focused on general genre fiction. It's, it's the biggest uh, of the of the paperback uh, markets for people ordering online. Uh, with kids books, there's a couple of other considerations and things like color that we're not offering right now. Um, I, eventually we might get into kids books, but it will probably be a while. All right. We got a question from Michelle. Um, do we need different keywords for Barnes and Noble and other book platforms? This is a, this is a tricky question to answer. Um, but we should probably start by, by saying what we're, what our current capabilities are with keywords. So Anyone with keywords, um, you're going to want to, we, we let people put in uh, quite a few. I don't remember off the top of my head what the limit is. Um, you can use the same ones. Not everyone, not all the retailers use the keywords for anything. Um, that being said, like probably the retailer where keywords matter quite a bit is Amazon because Amazon is going to use your keywords to determine some of the categories you're in. Uh, so if you look up the KDP guidelines for keywords, they kind of give you a list of what keywords get you into what extra categories. Um, the other retailers aren't like that. And so you can use the same uh, keywords at all of the retailers. In general, Amazon's whole keyword strategy is kind of um, a little bit superior to most other platforms. So if, you, if you're tuning your keywords for Amazon, you're probably going to do okay elsewhere. Um, the one thing you want to definitely focus on is make sure that your first four keywords are the most important and in the order of importance that will help you out a, a great deal, at least on Amazon and probably other platforms as well. Mark, did you want to throw something in there? Well, no, just you got to got to remember, um, if you think about Amazon only accepts two categories, but many other retailers accept three. So think of those top ones as the most important because not every downstream system is going to accept three or four or five. 
right? So always put the priority ones at the top of any of those lists. All right, we yeah. got a question from, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say within our system, you can select up to five categories. Uh, what I think is what uh, Mark is referencing. You want your the, the category your book most fits in as the first uh, category and uh, you know basically in order if you choose all five categories. Um, keywords are a little bit separate than that. Um, Amazon is like an exception where Amazon will let you choose one or two categories, but then they also assign categories based on keywords. Uh, like I mentioned before, the other retailers don't really use the keywords in that way. All right. Uh, Kayla asks, does DDD offer any editing services or partner with a service? And I know you use beta readers for this, but having a sharper eye on it has its appeal. Um, we don't offer any uh, of those services ourselves. Well, our good friends over at readsy.com can actually uh, help you find an editor if you need one. Uh, that's more or less the, I'd say that's our, our sort of semi-official partnership uh, when it comes to that sort of thing. Uh, we would recommend them. And they're kind of like an, um, they may hate me for, for saying this. Ricardo may hate me for saying this, but they're kind of like an Angie's list for authors. So any service that you need, uh, layout, editing, uh, cover design, uh, what have you, they're, they're a pretty decent resource for that. And there are plenty of other resources out there, so you should always shop around and find what works best for you. But if you're going to start somewhere, that'd be a good place to start. The nice thing about Readsy is that they've vetted everyone that they work with. Uh, a lot of their editors and cover designers are people who freelance and work for the big five in New York uh, and other big publishers around the world. Um, and that they have a, a process, like if you're not happy with uh, the way the edits turned out, they have a process to work with you and kind of arbitrate between you and the editor. All right, uh, Sally asks, what's the best practice for entering book descriptions in DD? So the formatting, bold, blank lines, et cetera, carries forward to all stores. Uh, so we have uh, a little bit of limited HTML that you can use within our the book description tool on our page. So you, it, it's HTML, but you can also, there's just the standard like click the bold italics, uh, that sort of thing. So you can do a little bit of formatting and that will carry over certainly to all of our retailers um i don't know can we do how can we do actual html i think we can like basic html i hardly yeah, ever do it now we send different types of codes to different retailers because they all support different things uh some of them do support bold and we send that information on to them right. uh, some of them don't some of them strip that stuff out do we yeah, have a, a list of which mind. ones uh, accept uh, or not that might I, I don't I don't know if we've gone through there, but I bet our operations team can answer a lot Probably, of those questions. Yeah, they would know that. Uh, okay, this is a fun one. Um, thanks for addressing my checklist question. Is there, will there be a Google Drive slash GDoc integration to import share uh, to create an EPUB? Um, there is some history. I don't think, currently we don't have that, but uh, apparently, uh, according to local D2D &D lore, that was how we started, uh, was the integration with that. So uh, I've had other people ask about this. So I, I, I find it very interesting, and I don't know what the limitations on our side are, but I would love to see that brought back at some point. But Dan, you may I, have more insight in that. We, we did support it early mm -hmm. on. Um, at that time, I think Google Docs was rapidly changing. They were changing the way they did things. So it's hard to keep up with when they made a change to update our platform. And we had so few people using it that we, I think we dropped it at that point. Um, you know, if you're someone interested in that, email us, let us know. Uh, if we have enough demand for it, it's something we might look at as supporting again. And we have supported it in the past, but um, little changes they made kept breaking the code on our end. So. I just got chastised by um, Alyssa, who's listening in and helping us out for uh, putting you on the spot, Dan. So my apologies, sir. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> uh, Barbara asks, uh, is there a way to get all the information on marketing on the various platforms? Uh, sort of a how-to type thing for those of us who are clueless. And my answer is surf on over to drafttodigital.com slash blog. And you can sift through uh, a couple of years worth of some uh, decently written articles on all, all types of uh, author marketing. Uh, search for Author Marketing 101 in the uh, uh, 
uh, little search bar on that page and it'll bring up a, a three part series I did a, co a couple of years ago that can give you some basics on that sort of thing. And on our YouTube channel, we have some stuff that might be helpful to you as well. So if you're subscribing to us here, uh, check that out. And we're, of course, we do these webinars uh, once a month. So these are a good resource for learning uh, some some tips about all sorts of things, including marketing. So make sure you're you're uh, checking out uh, d2dlive.com, which is our brand new URL. So yeah, I believe one of them like we just covered marketing questions the entire hour. So that's probably a good yeah. one of the ask us anything to look up from the drop to digital live. Yeah, sometimes we do themes. So uh, we've done a marketing theme. We did an audiobook theme. Uh, go find those if you for those of you who are interested in the audiobooks in particular. Go find the one we did with Will uh, Degas from Find Away Voices. Uh, it'll be in the playlist. Um, I think we have, a, I definitely have a playlist. I don't remember what it's called, but it'll be on our channel. So pop over there and take a look at that and you'll, uh, you'll get a lot of insight. Um, Trish asks, do you know of some good ways to get books to libraries across the country? Um, you know, this, uh, people hate when you say things like this, but the best way to do this is to ask them. <laughs> uh, and I, I always, uh, I always advise people to start, start connecting with librarians on the various social media platforms. If you happen to go to conferences and things, or you want to go to your local libraries, especially, uh, but you know, drop in, make friends and, uh, let them know you're an author. You have books available and tell them how to find them, make it easy for them. Uh, librarians, often and frequently are looking for things to recommend to their patrons. So make that as easy a process as you can. Um, I'm actually in the middle of, as soon as I got the time to finish it, I'm going to, I'm creating a little one sheet packet and I'll have a digital and physical version that I can carry with me to libraries and I can email to people and just make it as stupid, simple as possible for librarians to discover my work. I give them comp, comps like i am like these authors my books are like these books these movies you know and i give them uh i give them all the tools they need to be able to recommend so cultivate those relationships and eventually you know you are available to all the libraries in the country if you distribute through our our program especially so all you got to do is convince them to uh to place the order not just the country, but the whole world. Um, the whole we, world. We have, Thousands of them. Our, our vendors work with libraries all over the world, and we continue to add new library partners. Um, the The important thing is just to let people know they're available and that they have to ask for them. Uh, I especially encourage people, as we have a lot of authors coming out of Kindle Unlimited, where they've been exclusive with Amazon, and so their books haven't been able to be in libraries. Um, if when you have people complain because they, if they can't afford anything other than uh, the subscription that Amazon is charging them for Kindle Unlimited, let them know that they can request your book at the local, local library because that's another way for them to read it uh, without it being a, a huge burden on them financially. All right, Regina asked. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you? No, want to I was just gonna say we up? also did a we did a full episode talking about libraries. Well, a mini <coughs> episode Dan and I did when I was in Oklahoma a few weeks ago we talked outfit. about that in detail i would say if you want to get across the country start local appeal to the local librarian as a local author librarians meet regularly they share ontario library association conference is happening uh next week here uh, in the toronto ontario area and uh, and so even if you're getting in local start local and then build out from that way as well we got a question from Regina. Okay. Uh, once we have, oh, I knew it was going to do that. <laughs> there was a like slight <laughs> delay. Okay. Once we have our books on D 2 D, how easy is it to change the text on ebook if we find errors after the fact? Is ridiculously. It's easy. permanent, isn't who, it? Who like once to, you uh, once you once you do it. It's stone. We we actually toyed with calling our service Stone to Digital. No, <laughs> it would be Digital to Stone. It would be Draft to Stone. Anyway. <laughs> Moving on from that bad uh, joke, it is really easy to up update your manuscript. Just make your updates in the uh, the document that you are going to upload, whether it's whether you are uploading a Word document or you're uploading in the actual formatted EPUB, which you are welcome to bring your formatted EPUBs uh, to us. Um, it's as simple as uploading it and republishing it. And we'll update all the storefronts on your behalf and let you know when it's gone live or let you know if there's an issue that needs to be addressed. The, the major retailers, it's generally going to be a, a few hours for them to make the correction. Um, 
to the what's available on their platform. Uh, some of the retailers take a few weeks. So, uh, you know, if you get something wrong, it's not permanent, but it, it might take a little bit for it to update. Um, for readers, like if they've already downloaded the book, they might have to uh, request a new copy of it. Okay, uh, this is not a question, but I did want to pop this up here because he he's he's uh, they are adding on to what we were discussing earlier. Um, Amazon KDP will only let you have seven keywords, and that is true. Um, we allow for more keywords, I believe, than seven. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we do, and I, that's that's mostly because there are retailers that will allow more than that. So we just want to give you all the options you can have, but. Uh, Amazon will only allow seven, and frankly, they only really allow four. Uh, and they, you, you can do whatever you want with the last three. <laughs> Just uh, uh, cram them full of keywords. That's what a lot of us are doing now. That's actually a strategy. Uh, you can put your your primary, most important keywords in the first four slots, and then in the last remaining slots, put, jam as uh, as many keywords as you can think of in there. Uh, as, as many they'll allow. There's a, like a character limit, but uh, cram those full. And, and it's uh, been demonstrated recently that that's proving to be kind of a helpful little uh, trick on Amazon. Okay. Um, so Carolyn says, I create my books on Word 2016 Mac and convert to PDF uh, that KDP accepts, but for Ingram Spark, uh, they require PDF, PDF X1. A2001, uh, that was a mouthful. That messes up my layout. Uh, anyone else have this problem? And are there any suggestions? Um, yeah, I would add, ask Ingram Spark about that. Yeah, I would ask Ingram. Uh, I would also recommend uh, just don't do not do that. Just use, uh, use us and we'll make your manuscript for you. <laughs> <laughs> to be just a little self-serving. Uh, oh, uh, Every now and then this thing pops the questions all the way up to the top of the page again, and I lose what I was looking at. Um, okay, this one's from Michelle. Uh, my books are mystery suspense, suspense with light romance, but I, also I keep them clean to reach a broader audience, basically a clean read, but no religious theme. Any advice on keywords? No? Okay, I have... A little. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, just like uh, the best ad advice is to do some research on your keywords. <clears throat> I would, uh, there are tools out there like uh, Publisher Rocket, which is a, a, a paid tool, but a great one to have in your arsenal that will help you do keyword research for both Amazon and for uh, Google. And as, as keywords go on Amazon, you can pretty much rely on them on other platforms. So it's pretty good to use all around. Uh, but I would also just some basic keyword research would be to go on Amazon and find the top 10 books that are the most like yours in the same category as yours and start looking at some of the keywords that they're using. You can kind of get an idea of this. Uh, look through their description. You can kind of get an idea of uh, what they're doing uh, keyword wise. I I'm not sure if Amazon still lets you see actual keywords anymore. Uh, it's been a while since I've used that trick. I think they stopped doing it, but you can kind of get an idea for how you should get your book set up uh, to at least make it competitive with similar books. So I would start there. Um, it, it's not spe that's not specific advice to uh, you know clean non-religious fiction, but if you find books that are very much like yours, you can at least get in the ballpark. I feel like I've seen a lot of authors start to in that case where like, it's not fully clear um, towards the end of their blurb, like letting people know kind of uh, what tropes it hits. Uh, so you, you might mention the uh, light romance, clean, clean, uh, no yeah. religious or something like that. Yeah. Um, just letting readers know what to expect from it. Frankly, I would put things like that in, in those final three keywords. Um, because you you can you can put phrases in as keywords. You don't have to do individual words specifically. Um, so if your book is uh, light, you know, use use these terms: mystery, suspense with light romance. Put that in there. Uh, you might try searching that term on on Amazon just to see if it if it looks like it brings up results. That's one way to test. Publisher Rocket will help you do exactly that. Um, we we're not affiliated with them, but it's a great tool that I like to use. So. 
uh, check that out. Um, so Carolyn asks, in your formatting services, uh, talk about what you like to receive, what services you offer, and how much it costs. Uh, so the good news is uh, our formatting costs nothing. You don't have to pay a dime to use our uh, our lay our ebook layout tool. It's free. the The actual templates are free. Everything about that is uh, no cost to you. Um, as far as what we like to receive, we we need either, if you wanna use those templates, you have to either upload a Word document, which is a .docx, I guess, or doc, or a .rtf. So those are the, the file formats you're gonna to wanna to upload in order to use the uh, ebook layout tool that we have uh, and the templates that we have. You can upload your own EPUB if you want, if you've got a pre-formatted EPUB. Um, and we can, we can distribute that. We just can't do anything to the file. And we're not going to be able to give you the, the fancy template. And we can't add our uh, automated in matter or any of that stuff. Um, well, there's a little bit of automated in matter we can add because we can actually add like the about the author and things like that. So you get a little bit of a few options there, but uh, you don't get to use any of the template stuff. Um, Am I forgetting anything, overlooking anything? I think just to be 100 transparent is all our tools are free. You can use us for converting your book and then take the EPUB away with you. Books to read is uh, is free. If you use draft to digital to distribute, there is a, a cost when you earn money. We keep uh, 10% basically. So and you know if you were to go direct to the retailer, they'd give you 70%, let's say, and then and we keep 10%. So you're basically getting 60. So, so Carolyn, that is the cost, uh, but the cost only happens if you're making money. So the, the good thing is, is um, until you've made a sale, it, it, ev everything is, is free. That's just, uh, and, and we prefer to only make money when authors are earning money. We figure that keeps us operating with uh, strong integrity. Uh, I got an interesting question from Bill. Uh, my co-author is my 12 year old daughter. Do you have an underage limit? Our ages added together come out uh, to mid thirties? <laughs> Uh, we do, if it may not be apply, Dan, correct me on this. Uh, we do have a, an age limit when it comes to the, uh, the author, uh, themselves, the individual author, like you can't come in. I think it's under 18. That's uh, correct. I mean, you, you, have to, you have to be able to make a legal contract. So if, if right. one of you can make the contract that works, but an 18 year old by, or someone under 18 could not, uh, yeah, you know, in those cases, I recommend if they're really interested in publishing uh, to look at platforms like Wattpad that are kind of designed for um, sharing things, but not necessarily, you know, the authors don't get paid. Right. Um, okay. Right now, this looks like our final question. So I'll pop it up. And uh, this is from Regina. I write in three genres. Does D2D display slash promote books by genre or solely by author? Um, so we don't since we don't have a storefront of our own, we don't uh, display or promote anything really. Um, but we can say that if you have like say pin names for your genres, you can, uh, you, we protect that. Uh, so if you say you write erotica or something uh, on the one hand, you don't want anyone to know that, or uh, you write sci-fi, you don't want anyone to know that, uh, we'll protect that identity when that goes out. And the books go to the retailers, so the retailers determine how they're displayed. So um, did I miss anything on that? No, most of our retailers, when they have promotions, are going to do them by genre. And so we're going to submit things that are romance, the romance uh, promotions. Um, after that, um, for our author pages, like if you use one of the books to read author pages, it's only going to show the things under that particular pen name uh, because we do have people that write, um, have a pen name that writes, uh, say, in young adult and then have a pen name that writes in something else that wouldn't be appropriate for young adults. And so uh, we separate that out. OK, um, so we did get we've got a couple more minutes before I want to start getting to like housekeeping stuff. So uh, we got a couple more questions that came in. Uh, here's one from Craig Price. If I have to chase it. Okay. Uh, crap. I'm late. You are late, Craig. Hang your head in shame. Uh, did they touch on co-authorship in the future? Co-authoring. 
Who wants to field that one? Can I uh, talk about that? Because sure. uh, we launched uh, draft to digital or D2D universes. When Kindle Worlds closed its doors, we wanted to offer authors an opportunity to take it beyond uh, and wide. And so that's been a, a beta release program. We've got some authors that are doing that uh, in the same manner that Kindle Worlds would operate. So for example, let's say Kevin, who, who writes uh, the Dan uh, Kotler series, um, uh, he, he's writing in his universe and, and I'd like to write in his universe. We can uh, negotiate terms uh, through D2D. &D. It's beta right now, so it's very manual, but then I can publish books in his universe and we, and we have a split, we have a royalty split. So right now, uh, I just uh, have a book up for pre-order that I've co-authored with someone and we're testing the existing technology that uh, D2D Universes is using for, for payment splitting. And uh, based on some of the experiences that we're having, as well as some other authors who are, are, are doing a very similar co-authorship, we're testing that out so that we can figure out the best way to roll out payment splitting Craig. So if you wanted to work with multiple authors and, and have all the payments taken care of to go directly to each of the authors. And, uh, you know, so please email us uh, and let us know what specifically you would be looking for, because this is something that I'm very passionate about helping uh, to implement over uh, in the course of the, the year for 2020, because I've seen it work really, really well for some authors. So uh, we, we haven't touched upon it, but thanks for asking that question, because we're going to be touching it a lot. <laughs> Moving on very quickly. Um, <laughs> uh, Bill says, this is going to be our final question. Uh, I love you guys. What can I do for you? And Bill, uh, w one thing you can do for us is uh, go off and publish as many books as you can possibly write, sir, and we will help get those out there in the world. And uh, you can use our Refer a Friend program, Refer Some Authors Our Way, and that benefits you and us. So uh, there's a link in the um, comments of, on uh, YouTube, I believe, and hopefully on uh, Facebook. Uh, you can go to drafttodigital.com slash account slash referrals, and that's where you can set up that Refer a Friend link that you can customize um, and send out. If you have blog posts, po uh, podcasts, uh, anything that is author facing, feel free to share that and you get some money and we get some money every time that author uh, makes us a sale. So we love to help each other out and uh, that whole rising tide lifts all boats thing. So And don't forget to uh, follow us on YouTube. Um, we're excited to be finally live on YouTube. We've been uploading our videos after the fact to YouTube now for a while, but um, there's like, exciting stuff we get to do if we get to a certain level of followers. And so, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, and the, love and the to other, be um, as possible. The other thing I wanted to, uh, Hey, cool. Brought that up, Kevin. Very sexy. <laughs> I, uh, Bill, uh, when you're sharing your book, uh, you, you take advantage of Universal Book Links because we love our, our retail and library partners. We want to work with them. We want to help them building their customer base. And we want our authors to sell more on all the platforms so that you'll always have lots of options and lots of different income streams, not just dependent on one retailer. So being inclusive, uh, Universal Book Links is an easy free way to do that. But being inclusive in your book promo actually helps us because it also helps our retail and library partners. Um, all right. So on screen right now are some links. We would appreciate it if you would go uh, follow us on both YouTube and Facebook. Uh, in both of those made it real easy. You can go to youtube.com slash draft to digital or facebook.com slash draft to digital. And that will allow you to uh, go ahead and click. There's a way to get notified every time we go live on Facebook. So make sure you turn that on. Uh, you can also uh, click the subscribe and uh, the little bell notification on YouTube to be notified every time we go live there. Uh, and we're going to be doing a crazy amount of video and webinar stuff over the next uh, year. So you're definitely going to want to check, check that out and tune in. Um, now we are, uh, this is something we like to offer at the uh, end of these things for the folks who are attending live. So if you're watching um, after the fact, we really apologize. Tune in live next time, and this might be available for you. But we have uh, we like to offer free author consultations, and these are one-on-one -on -one consultations uh, that would retail for four thousand dollars or uh, or something similar. Uh, but but not at all. We offer you a free thirty-minute uh, D2D author consultation with one of us, 
Uh, all you got to do is head on over to bit.ly slash D2D consult. I think that's probably going to appear in the, um, the uh, comments right now. So that might make it a little easier for you. But jot it down. Head over to uh, bit.ly uh, bit slash D2D consult. And uh, you'll be able to choose a date and time. If they run out, we apologize. They do go fast. Uh, it's just the way life seems to happen. And we only have a certain number of days in our lives and a certain number of hours in our days. So <laughs> did you want to add something, Mark? I thought I heard you. I was just going to say, and sometimes we sleep. Every once in a while. It doesn't, it doesn't happen often, but <laughs> sometimes. So... Go check that out uh, and uh, be sure to bookmark. We just got this URL. So you're going to want to bookmark d2dlive.com. And that's where uh, you'll always be able to find links and a little countdown timer and access to past webinars. Uh, so uh, right there on our website. Be sure to check that out. Bookmark that. Uh, and while you're in there looking at the past webinars, make sure you check out the blog and uh Dig in on all the stuff that's going on there and share that, will you? Go, uh, somebody, uh, Bill asked how we, how he can help. This is how you can help us. Go share this stuff as far and wide as possible. So, uh, you guys, uh, did fantastic. What, uh, you, you want to throw anything in here at the last minute? So, we will be at, um, Mark and I will be at Superstars Writing Conference, writing something. Seminars. Uh, uh, beginning of February, early February. Uh, Kevin will be at the San Francisco Writers Conference, right? Yes, yes. If you're so there, if you're, in, the, if you're in those areas or attending one of those, come say hi. Definitely. Okay, guys. Um, I think that's going to wrap us up. Uh, everyone, if you are, if you haven't already, uh, jot this URL down before we uh, vacate. And we will be doing another one of these. What's the date, Alyssa? I dropped it. What was the date? I see you. We saw, we saw it on the 28th, right? Yeah, 28th, 28th of February. February right. 28th. February 28th. We should have done it on Valentine's Day. 2 p.m. Central. 2 p.m. Central on February 28th. Mark your calendar. You'll also, if you're subscribing to us on these various platforms and uh, getting on our mailing list at, dra at draft2digital.com, you'll you will be alerted to this. So. Uh, make sure you're doing that. And uh, otherwise, I think that's going to do it for us. And thank you guys for playing along. Thanks, guys. Bye. All right. We'll see you next time.